Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting trick or treat gnomes and I'm sipping on some chai tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, green oxide, fire red, chrome yellow, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a small piece of white chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes for my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are brown and white. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be having the outside of my canvas uh, like a light brown color, and then I'm gonna uh, turn it into an even lighter brown color in the middle of my canvas to provide some nice spooky atmospheric dimension. So I have pre-mixed myself a light brown color, which is right here. How I got to that was I used a whole bunch of brown and just a teeny tiny touch of white. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm creating a little bit lighter version of my, that was a little bit too much white, a lighter version of my burnt umber that I can use um, for this nice, like misty kind of background that I'm going for. So this is, and it's got some, some warmth to it, so it'll help to get my characters to pop right out of the scenery. So this is looking pretty good to me. So once you've got that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that brown color, that light brown color, and color around the entire edges of my canvas. You can use a lot of paint, a little bit of paint, whatever works for you is fine by me. I'm using a good amount of paint, so I get pretty good coverage. I know that because I am using a pretty dark color and a light surface that is going on, I'm likely to see my brush strokes as I go through this painting process. So if you're going through this and you're seeing brush marks or brush strokes, that's all right. That was my intent on this background. So it looks like it's nice and foggy. So what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm, gonna, I'm starting to use more of a circular type of brush stroke. I'm gonna pick up my uh, light brown plus white on my brush. So I have light brown plus white on my brush and I'm going to get it to go lighter and lighter as it goes towards the center of my canvas. I'm using this circular brush stroke again to give the illusion of some, si some sort of foggy, misty type of uh, atmosphere that my, my Halloween characters are going through. It could be a forest, it could be a uh, a uh, back country road, it could be whatever you imagine it to be. So I'm just going for a nice, fun, 
loose kind of background that's going to give us that that set the scene so to speak for our for our painting now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pick up white on my dirty brush so i do still have a little bit of that light brown but i'm using more white in the center i don't necessarily want it to go all the way white because i do have my characters that are going to be coming on top of this so i want it to remain on the light brown side as opposed to white as it comes toward the center but if you go all the way white it's okay but if you you know want to add a little bit more darkness to it you can just come and do a second layer on it and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of sit here and fiddle with it as it's drying you can certainly do the same if you'd like to and then once you've got your background as finished as you'd like we're going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our gnomes. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable for you. I'm gonna be using my white chalk so you guys can see it nice and easily on camera. And so if I make a mistake, I can erase it easily. <laughs> so I am going to recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So this is the time where you can take an extra long break if you'd like to, or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers. We'll connect those markers, we'll make ourselves some nice basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting process. We're not going for any fine-tuned detail right now, just some nice simple shapes that we can create um, base coats for our gnomes. I'm going to be having two gnomes. I'm going to have a female mummy gnome on this side and then I'm going to have a male Frankenstein <laughs> mummy on this side. Uh, mummy gnome. No, Frankenstein gnome. <laughs> I'll get it right. I'm sure I will. A male Frankenstein gnome on this side. I'm going to have the female a little bit shorter than the male and they're going to be holding jointly a trick-or-treating kind of bucket in the middle. So when I do this, I'm gonna space them uh, far enough apart so I can have a bucket between them. I'm gonna start with my female first. I'm gonna find myself the center of my canvas at the top. I'm gonna come about halfway between that and the edge of my canvas here, so about a quarter of the way over. And then I'm gonna come down about a quarter of the way down my canvas. So this is maybe about four inches. So if this is halfway down my canvas, or somewhere around there, I'm halfway between that and here. So somewhere about there. Then I'm gonna travel straight down from there until I'm about inch and a half to two inches away from the bottom of my canvas, something like that. I'm gonna travel out to the right from here, about two to three inches on either side. Doesn't have to be perfect. One can even be a little bit more farther away than the other. I'm gonna connect these three dots like this, just a nice, straight line across and then I'm going to connect these two corners to up here it's going to have a rounded head and then when I come down I'm going to kind of bring it down and then kick it out just a little bit like there this is a cloth kind of um drapery thing that my gnome is wearing so I'm going to start over here I'm going to bring it down in a curve like that and then just kind of bring it down in this direction and then maybe bump it out a little bit at the bottom like that Think of this as kind of like a, the shape of a ghost. So something like that, and then down in that direction. I'm gonna provide my um, Frankenstein with a similar shape, only the top of his is gonna be a little bit more square at the top. So again, I'm gonna find myself my center point here. I'm gonna go about halfway between there and the edge of my canvas, so somewhere about here. And then for him, I'm only gonna come down maybe about two inches. So he's gonna be taller than, than hers. Then I'm gonna come down straight from that till I am about the same distance from the bottom. So maybe maybe even a little bit lower, so maybe somewhere around here. Now, what I've done here is I've put you a little bit further over to the right than the center of my Frankenstein. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it from here and go to the right about an inch and a half, somewhere in through here, make myself a little marker. And then I'm gonna come all the way over until I'm almost touching her clothing and I'm gonna make myself the other corner. So this is just a little bit lower than that one, but it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm gonna connect these three like this. So I have a, 
a line across the bottom and again it doesn't have to be straight and then at the top the the main part of the head is going to be more square than hers so I'm going to take it from here and come over to the left until I'm about maybe an inch or two from the center point of my canvas so somewhere in through here I'm going to connect these two with a pretty straight line and now I'm going to start to curve this and bring it down towards the bottom so I'm going to take this curve it around this corner and then I'm going to just bring it down like this kick it out at the bottom again like I did to that one and then same thing over on this side so I'm going to pull it out like this bring it down so I kind of came back in a little bit on it and then again kind of kick it out at the bottom so we have our two basic shapes now we need to make noses hands and feet <laughs> so for her I'm going to do her feet is just going to be two circles that are going to kind of meet the bottom of her dress like this or her costume, I should say, like that. I'm gonna have her nose right about in through here. So it's gonna be a big oval, kind of in the middle of, um, if this is the middle of the object, go a little bit higher than that. I'm gonna have her um, hand. I'm gonna have one here. This is gonna be the one that's kind of held straight out at the viewer holding the bucket. And then I'm gonna have one down here. This is going to be her arm kind of down here. So it's going to be an arm. So I'm going to give her a couple of lines to create her arm. And then I'm going to go and do the same thing over on my Frankenstein only. He's going to have bigger feet. So I'm going to take these feet and I'm going to give a couple of vertical lines that cross over or past my the bottom of my thing. I'm going to give a little arc that way and a little arc that way. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side, make two vertical lines, a little arc going under and a little arc going over. I'm going to find where I want his nose to be. So I want his nose to be a little bit higher than hers. So I'm going to come up a little bit and over. And then I'm going to make my big nose in through there. He's going to have a matching hand in through here, but it's going to cross over his body right about here. And then he's going to have one that's similar to this only on this side. So somewhere in through here. I need to give him an arm like that and like that. And then what I need to do is I need to do one more marker to separate the green color we're going to use at the top of the body here from the black clothing. So the separation is going to be the beard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from this, uh, this marker right here and I'm going to curve this in here and give a whole bunch of little jagged type of lines in this section and through here, right up to where the this hand meets here, like that. And then I'm going to do a the trick or treat bucket. So I'm just gonna take from here and give myself a round type of object connecting these two hands. I'm gonna give a little close off like that and a little handle like this. Now, so we don't get confused, I'm gonna take my medium brush I'm going to put a little bit of water on it and I'm going to erase some of these guidelines. I'm going to erase this line right here. I'm going to erase this line right here. I'm going to erase that in there. I'm going to erase this one. This is just water on my brush right now. I'm going to erase this one right here. I'm going to erase this right here. So if you were using pencil or something like that, you could certainly just use a regular eraser. And I'm going to erase this one right in through here, making sure I've erased all the lines I want to. And that's looking pretty good. So I am going to be actually putting my chalk away. I'm going to use my medium brush for the next step so you can make any adjustments that you need to. Put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the base coat for our gnomes. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are all of my colors. <laughs> so I'm using uh, red, yellow, green, black, brown, and white. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tan color for my mummy, which is going to be different than this light brown that we created back here. So it will take on a different hue. Um, than what we've got going on back here. I'm going to make a custom color for all my skin pieces, which are going to be the noses and the hands. And I'm going to create a custom green color for my Frankenstein hair. Well, I'm going to start with my tan color for here. 
I have magically pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. This is my tan. How I got to that was I used a little bit of my light brown, a touch of yellow, a touch of red, and white. So what I'm doing is I'm lightening up that light brown and I'm adding a little bit of orange to it because red and yellow makes orange. So I'm really just making a nice light creamy colored tan color so this can act as the base coat for my um, mummy cloth of sorts. So once I've got that color I'm going to just paint in a solid coat for the entire mummy. I don't need it to be perfect we're just going for something that ha that is going to provide us with a nice base to build the cloth details on later. You can bring your paint all the way to your chalk mark and if your mummy changes shape along the way, like mine seems to be getting a little bit wider in some spots, that's okay because there's no rules as to what size your your no mummy needs to be. You can make it whatever size or shape that you want. I'm also going to pull out, now that I've got some good shape, I'm going to pull out a couple of little straggler pieces of the wrap that are holding my, my mummy's costume on. <laughs> so you can have fun pulling out some straggler little pieces. I'm going to bring this down all the way to the um, to my chalk mark down here. I'm going to bring it around my little feet and again not terribly concerned about perfect coverage just looking to get an, something that I can build my um, I don't even know what the mummy is made of. Gauze? <laughs> Some kind of wrapping material to cover its um, under skin, under body <laughs> to protect it from whatever it is needs to be protected from. <laughs> so then I'm going to just, once I've got this done, I'm going to create um, a custom, or actually no, I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to paint in some of the black areas. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. The black areas are going to be my trick-or-treat container, my shoes, and my clothing for my Frankenstein. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm putting black paint on my brush. I'm going to just create a circular or an oval type of shape for these shoes. You can even overlap it over the cloth, it's okay, or into the ground. Whatever is working for you is totally fine. If they turn out one a little bit bigger or smaller than the other, that works too. <laughs> Maybe you want to reshape yours. Maybe you want yours to look square. Whatever works is, is fine. As you get over to these other objects that are bl a black object next to a black object, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave the little, a little evidence of my chalk mark between those two sections. So that way I won't lose my thoughts as to which, which object is which. Um, so as I'm going through this process, I won't forget that this is part of the trick or treat thing and that's part of the shirt. So I will, or dress or whatever Frankenstein's wearing, his clothing. Um, so I'm just going to leave a little evidence of my chalk mark as I go through those particular areas. This is just the handle, so I'm just going to put a black line on in through there, and then the shoes in through here. So you can see I'm just kind of, um, it's these shoes are going to be the same color as the clothing. So again, I will leave a little tiny bit of my chalk, and if I paint over my chalk by accident, I'll just leave a little gap between one section to the other. So it's not going to make that much of a difference um, as long as you know where you're going with the next step when we go to put our details on these black objects. And then again, just kind of going right next to my chalk mark. And you could certainly use a smaller brush as you're going through these littler pieces on the um, beard area. I want it to remain kind of jagged, so I'm just going to take my brush and kind of give myself some little jagged marks in through here. I, it will kind of blend in with my um, with my green area in a minute, but I'm just going to leave myself some kind of sketchily um, identi uh, identification between the um, where the beard's going to be and the clothing is going to be, so something like that. So that way it starts my process of where my beard is going to be will make it look like it's kind of almost real hair 
uh, as as real as we can get on our painting gnomes. And then again, down this side, you can bring it all the way to your chalk mark. But if again, if you still have little evidence of the chalk as you're um, going through this process on areas where you don't feel that you need it, you can always later just erase it with a little bit of water or you can come back and, and paint over it. I usually, if I do have a little bit of remnants of chalk after I'm all said and done, I'll just come back through with a little bit of water on my brush to, to take care of it. And you can see how I'm leaving a little bit of the edge of my um, chalk mark between my boots and my um, clothing so that way I again, so I so I know where those two places meet when I go to do the other objects. And you could certainly paint his clothes a different color if you wanted to. Maybe you want to do some different kind of gnome, so you could certainly adapt these shapes into whatever um, unique color scheme that you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and do this arm in through here. And again, just black paint is going to help me along there. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my, my skin color. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to create a custom skin color. So I will be using, well, I've already done it so you can see where I'm headed. This is the color that I'm going for. I used a little bit of yellow, about equal parts of yellow, red, and brown, and then white paint as well. And then I just spun them together. So yours might, when you spin it together initially, it might be too pink, it might be too yellow, and you can just ad adjust it after that. If you want a little more red or a little more pink look to it, go ahead and add more red to it or more yellow or more brown, whatever works for you. We will be doing a second layer on all of the skin pieces. So if this doesn't turn out exactly as you had anticipated when you paint it on, know that when we go to do the second layer, you'll be able to adjust it then as well. So I'm going to find all of my skin pieces and just color them in. So I am doing like round type of shapes for these objects, while well, the noses are going to be oval, the hands are oval roundish, <laughs> but you can certainly, you know, if you want to put mittens on your hands or do anything else that you want, feel free to be as creative as you want. As I'm going into these areas where I feel that the hands would be in front of another object, like the bucket, I'm making sure that I overlap that color for the hand in front of like the handle and in front of the the bucket so that way it will appear as if it's in front of those objects and again you don't necessarily need to go that far in the detail yet but as you work your way through the process those are the little things that will make one object look like it is in the proper perspective next to um, whatever it's next to. And then I've got his nose up and through here, so just making sure I've got the nose colored in. And then I have one more custom color to make, which is gonna be my green. We will be giving our Frankenstein some black hair, but I wanna lay down the green for the whole head first. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush, and I'm gonna create a custom green color. So this is going to be my Frankenstein green. <laughs> what I've done, I've already made it here. Well, how I got to this color was I just used a lot of my green oxide and a little bit of my chrome yellow. And that's making me this really nice, vibrant green color, kind of a yellowish green color. And then I'm going to use that to paint in the entire head. I know that because I am using this vibrant type of a color on top of a dull background, I will have the evidence of brush marks. You're gonna be able to see like a streakiness to it. Whereas when I did the black, you couldn't really see. Where I did the skin, you couldn't really see. But because of the color combination that I'm using here, you the paint will look a little bit more streaky. And I'm okay with that because I know I'm gonna be doing a second coat on this. You can certainly, if you, or second layer with other details. You could certainly um, just do a second coat once you've got this on here, but I know that I'm gonna be doing so many additional things later that it doesn't matter if it's perfect right now. I'm just gonna let happen what's gonna happen with it being streaky, and then when I come back to do my details later, I will rectify all of that streakiness and make it 
look like it's supposed to look or like I want it to look and nice and finished. I'm going right up to that nose, making sure that I've got this kind of painted nice and out. And then when I get to the beard and the, these arms, I'm going to bring this color um, into that, that black area. So I'm going to bring this down and then I'm just going to kind of pull it over that black. Some of my black might still be wet, some of it might not. Whatever happens, just let happen. If it if you start to pull some of that black through the green, it's all right because again, we're going to be doing another layer on top of it. You can see I can see right through my green, so I can see that black right underneath it. And then when I'm also going to pull out a couple of pieces above the arms. So I've got this green on my brush, and I'm just going to pull out a couple of pieces that are gonna start the process of his beard out on the sides in through here. So not, not doing much, just kind of pulling some fun little pieces out these sides. And then we're gonna be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting a shadow underneath our gnomes and we're also going to put a dark border around the canvas so it kind of gives it a little bit more of a little bit more atmospheric dimension gives the painting some great depth and will make it look like they're out in the middle of a forest perhaps <laughs> or a nice spooky Halloween evening. So I've got my large brush I'm going to be using black and brown paint for this uh, process you might uh, we are going to be putting a shadow underneath the gnome so just make sure like their feet and their clothing down here is dry so you don't run through wet paint what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a scumbling or scrubbing type of technique which means I'm going to be using pretty dry brush with not a lot of paint and I'm going to be rubbing in a darker area so that way I'm not going all the way black it's going to give a sense of airiness to it and you'll be able to see some of the some of this light brown color that we've used as well. I'm going to start with my shadow underneath my gnomes and then I will put my border around the canvas. I'm going to start with a little bit of brown paint and just a teeny tiny touch of black paint. So I have just a little tiny dot on the edge of my brush and brown. I don't want a lot so in order to prepare myself and not have too much I can just kind of wipe it off on my paper towel. I don't want this to go all the way black. That's why I'm consciously trying not to use a lot of paint. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to rub it underneath my gnomes. I also want it to look like it's behind them a little bit. So I will bring this up between them. Don't worry about bumping into their clothing because we're gonna, we have to put a second layer on their clothing. So that's why I'm okay with bumping into the sides of it. I just want it to look like they are in fact on the ground. There's a little bit of shadow underneath them. I'm reloading my brush with a little bit of that same color combination so I can have some underneath her body in through here. And I don't want to paint the whole bottom of my canvas with this dark color because I want to be able to have a little bit of maybe the illusion of some dirt or something on the ground. So just bringing this in through this area. I'm going to do the same thing underneath him. So a little bit of brown and black. And again, try not to go all the way black because He's got black clothing on, but I still want it to look like there's a shadow, so that's why I want it to go a little bit darker than the ground, uh, light brown color that we had done. So just adding these little um, nuances of tonal shifts will help to um, provide all of this great information with not a lot of work done. So you're just adding these bits of um, information about what the light source is doing, what the texture of the ground is doing. So that's looking pretty good to me. It looks like there's a shadow underneath them and behind them. So now I'm going to add a little bit of border around my canvas. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint. I didn't wash my brush, so if I still have some brown on there, so be it. I'm going to start up in the corners and I'm just going to start to rub it into the edge of my canvas. So what this is doing, it's providing me with this really soft, dark border to the canvas. 
I am going to be putting some trees and branches on my um, canvas later. So this is just going to provide with a, a nice little background to them. And again, kind of close off the edges of the, the canvas. So again, hardly any paint on my can on my brush. And I'm just kind of rubbing it along these edges. I start on the exterior. And then as I'm running out of paint, I can kind of pull it into or rub it a little bit farther into the canvas itself. And this is one of those techniques of as you're doing it, if something goes awry and you're like, oh my God, I had too much black on my brush and it just went too far in, it's too dark, then just, I would say, take a breath, <laughs> let it dry a minute, and then you can come back with some of that, that light brown color that we put in the beginning and just counteract it with that. I am going all the way around the bottom edge of my canvas as well, just to again, kind of close off this bottom. So I do have a little bit of this dark border around the whole thing so it looks cohesive and there's a harmony with all of the techniques that I've used around the whole painting. And then once you've got this done, you can fiddle with it all you'd like. And then we're going to be using uh, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the mummy wrap. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word for it, but the mummy costume. We'll call it a costume right now. I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are mostly brown and white, but I might tap into that tan color if I need to. Um, but I'm thinking right at the moment, I'm probably just going to use brown and white. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating with my brown paint, I'll be creating almost an outline of, of the pieces of cloth that are wrapped around the mummy. I don't know my mummy terminology, so we're just going to make up words as we go along. I'm going to um, create these lines in a fashion that's going to show the form of my gnome. So as I'm doing this, I'm going to have these lines kind of curving around her little body here. So I'm going to start with some brown paint on my brush, and I'm going to create the, probably the, the I'll call them the, um, the structured pieces of the cloth, and then we'll just kind of carefree make ones around, um, little connector ones around it. So I'm going to be creating one on the head, kind of in, in this area, just kind of draping down like this. And I'm just doing kind of slender brown lines right now in between these pieces in order to give myself almost like a, a little road map of sorts of where I want all of these um, pieces of cloth to go. I'm not really concerned about my edges around the exterior part of the gnome because I'm going to be, when I bring in the white paint, I'll be able to clean those up a little bit. And you can really make these in whatever way that you want as you're going through this process. If you want yours in a different kind of pattern than mine, feel free to do so. I'm just kind of having um, some fun making curved ones going around the head. And, you know, maybe this one's at the top. Maybe we've got, you know, a, you know, a couple in through here. So once I make, you know, one or two in that main section of her, I'll just put little spacer lines in between. I want to have one kind of coming over her nose in this direction, so but under this one. So we're going to just kind of skip that in through there, maybe bring it down like this. And again, I'm doing these in order to kind of show the shape. So as I go around the nose, I'm giving it a curve. So it looks like maybe the um, cloth is resting on her nose it's going around her head here so I give it that curve and now you know those are just little tricks as you're as you're creating designs for painting those are the little tricks that are going to allow for the viewer to understand a lot about the the form and the shape of of objects it's not always just um, in the color pattern and stuff like that. It's also in those lines that you create throughout the painting. That helps to explain what's happening with shapes and objects and directional things. So you can certainly um, 
you know, help along the story by putting these lines in distinct um, places to, to talk about that. So I think I'm gonna put one coming in through here, like this. I want one coming over the feet. So again, telling the story of these, the, the cloth going around the feet, maybe this one kind of converges with that one. And I know that I'm just really making a fun type of painting here, so I don't have to worry about it being perfect. I know that, you know, if, if one of my pieces of cloth doesn't look like it connects to anywhere, <laughs> I'm okay with that. I think I'm gonna put one kind of coming in this direction, maybe behind this one. And of course you can really just have fun. Your, your lines, again, don't have to be exactly as mine. You can make them in whatever way that you want, but just have fun with it. You know, this is a, a carefree, fun type of painting. Anything goes when you're doing these, these style of paintings because you get to, you know, make it into whatever you want. I do have a little arm in through here that I want to make sure that you can kind of see. So I'm going to just put a line in through there just again to explain the story. Maybe we'll put one in through here. I've got this little piece coming out like this. This I guess I could just bring right up in through there. And then maybe we've got one coming down in through here like this. And you could certainly use a smaller brush for this step. You don't have to use a larger brush like I'm using, but I know when I go to do the white accent pieces, I'm gonna want to have a little bit larger of a brush for that part. So I figured I would just use the same brush for this as well. I want that piece to be in front, and then maybe we'll put a nice big one kind of going all the way across skipping over in through there and again you know freestyle this it doesn't have to be exactly as mine you can have your little markings going whatever way that you want and i'm thinking that's pretty good she's gonna have a braid um two braids coming down here so if this isn't perfect that's all right those braids will will help to hide things maybe a little bit of darkness up in through here there we go now i'm going to uh wash my brush and i'm going to be adding white on top of this. So I'm washing my brush and now I'm gonna just be putting white on this. So I know that I, I don't need to paint the whole thing. What I'm gonna do is I am going to put my white pretty darn heavy within kind of the center of these, uh, of these pieces of cloth. So that way some of that tan still shows through I will be, I can also use it kind of heavily on these edges if I want to. I'm not painting the whole thing. I'm just kind of using a nice loose brush stroke to allow for some of that tan to show um, in between as well. Just kind of pulling a little bit in through here, pulling a little bit in through here. And again, I'm using the tan underneath as a dimensional type of element. So I don't need to paint the whole thing in. I wanted to have this kind of two-tone effect. So it may be, maybe the cloth looks a little dirty, maybe it looks a little weathered, whatever you imagine it to be. It, maybe you want yours to be all tan. So you could certainly pick up the white plus the tan on your brush at the same time. I put it pretty heavy at the top. As I'm coming down into the body, down in through here, I'm just kind of letting myself almost run out of paint. So maybe some areas are a little bit darker than um, that top portion. And I'm just kind of going inside these markers in through here, allowing for now I'm getting a little bit more carefree with my brush stroke. And I haven't reloaded my brush in a while. So this is allowing for even more of that tan to show. I do have to reload now because I'm out of paint. So maybe I'll put this brighter stuff down in these feet or above the feet. So this maybe wrinkle of the, of the cloth pops out a little bit more and then let myself run out 
of paint allowing for that tan to kind of show a little bit as well. And then once you've got this done, I'm not going to do anything fancy here. Maybe make sure, just make sure that my edges are cleaned up a bit. If I needed to go into that tan, now's probably the time I would do it. So I'm picking up a little bit of tan just to make sure my edges where like I am meeting my um, my shadow area, making sure that those are fully executed because I'm not going to come back to this um, this clothing. I'm going to be putting her braids on in a little bit, but I'm not going to be doing anything else to the edges. So now is the time to finish up any unfinished um, edges with your tan and or your white on your brush. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our mummy's braids and boots. I'm going to be using my medium brush. You could certainly use your small brush for this if you wanted to, but I think I'm going to be nailing it with my medium brush. That's where I'm headed. What I'm going to be doing is she's going to have dark brown braids. They're going to come right out from these little corners here, and they're going to go all the way almost down to her boots, so somewhere in through here. I'm going to be using a combination of brown and black to create those braids. I'll be doing a little bit of a highlight on the top of her boots, with uh, some black and white, and then we'll do some little um, ties on the braids so they don't unravel on us. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush. So I have mostly brown with a little bit of black on the tip of my brush. I'm gonna start this braid up in through here. So I want this to be pretty wide as it's coming out from underneath the cloth. So you can bring this pretty close to the hand in through here. This is pretty dark right in through here. I'm just gonna pull this down just a little bit, making sure I got it up in that little crevice by her nose. And then I'm just gonna kind of pull it down like this. I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. So again, I have the black and the brown, so it's really dark on the canvas right now. It could seemingly almost be black right now. <laughs> and I'm gonna bring this again pretty close to the edge of her um, of her head in through there and then maybe bring a little bit of this darkness up in this corner and then maybe under this nose a little bit just as a little shadowy area and now that I've got that on there and I've kind of started those braids I'm just gonna mark how far down I want them to go so I don't go too too far so I'm gonna have this coming right about down in through here and then just travel down and I'll have this one kind of come in right down in through here. So now I have my how far I want to go. I'm reloading my brush with a lot of brown at this point and I'm going to create this kind of crisscross type of brush stroke. So I just kind of swish it from, um, I do a little left then a right then a left then a right and just kind of cross them over one another and then I'm going to just pull out these little pieces at the end. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I've just got brown on my brush right now. We'll add a little more oomph to it in a minute, but right now just kind of doing this first layer with the brown on my brush. And then at the bottom of it, I'm going to pull out these little cute wispy pieces. So while that's setting for a minute, I'm going to go down to the boots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a tiny bit of black and white on the tip of my brush. So itty bitty bit of both right on the tip of my brush. I'm going to create a highlighted spot right at the almost the top of the boot in through here. So I'm creating a gray area towards the top of the boot and then just rubbing it down. So I want there to appear to be um, a highlighted area at the top. And then as I come down towards the bottom, I see I have a little unpainted area down here. So I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of black as I get down towards the bottom of that boot to make sure that I have that fully painted in. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and pick up a tiny dot of white paint on the tip of my brush to create an even brighter spot right on that tippy top. So it's brightest on the top of the boot and then it gets darker as it goes down. You might find that yours end up looking more square or maybe yours are super duper round. It's all right, There's no, there is no um, 
exact need for them to be a certain uh, a specific shape, just something that works for you with a little bit of dimension will work. So I'm going to now go back into my um, brown with a little bit of black on my brush. So brown and black, and I'm doing a, a quick second coat on my braids without over painting them. So I'm just kind of coming down those uh, one more pass with a little bit of black and brown. So they look nice and dark, and then I'm just gonna bring this out. But they still have a little bit of highlight because of that first pass that I did. So again, just a second pass with a little bit of black and brown puts a little bit more dimension, makes them look a little bit more finished. And then down, and it also makes it so I can't see any of the details underneath from um, from the clothing. So that's also a goal to make sure that you don't see any of those details underneath. Then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint and give a little, um, a little band around the edge right in through here. So that's just a little bit of black paint. We're gonna do the same thing on this side, right at the bottom, give myself a little tie, and then a tiny bit of white paint, give myself a little highlight on that tie. And then you can fiddle with it all you want, make any adjustments that you want. We are going to be using this same brush for the next step, so once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the clothing and the boots on Frankenstein's costume. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black and white. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating um, form on the arm and on the clothing so it looks like it's got some movement to it and also on the boots so they look like they are not just flat so that we'll make it so they look like they're popping out. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna put black with a little bit of white paint on my brush. So black with a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna start on my arm. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a light line in through there as well as in through here. So this is gonna be the cuff. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up more black paint and I'm gonna get this to just blend out. I don't need to go all the way white. I'm really just looking to kind of put a gray area on the top of the arm in order to make it look like it is round. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I picked up a bit more black paint in order to get this to blend in just a little bit more and to clean up my edges. So something like that. I wanna make sure that I've got this kind of going all the way out, making sure that it it fills in my space as much as I want it to. And you could certainly, once you get this on here, if it's not light enough or dark enough, just let it dry for a minute. And then you can amp up that highlight, make it brighter or make it darker. So that's what I'm gonna do for the sleeve. I'm gonna approach the rest of the, um, uh, the rest of the clothing the same way as well as the boots. So I'm gonna put black plus a little bit of white on my brush on my clothing. I know that I want it to kind of look like it's rippling over his boots in through here and then maybe a little bit of movement at the bottom. So I have black and white on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of put this lighter area above the boots and then, so I like to put it in the area that I feel it's gonna be the lightest first and then I'm just gonna kind of move it around in the direction that I feel that that fabric is falling. So if I feel like it's kind of falling down in this direction, I can bring up a little bit of those gray notes from what from my brush and then maybe just rub it up in through here. I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot on his clothing because it is black and we've got other things that are gonna steal the show from um, the appearance where the boots are gonna stick out a little bit farther, but I do wanna give it a little bit of movement, so that's why I'm adding these little bits of gray paint in through here. So that's looking pretty good to me. Now I'm gonna work on my boots. I do, um, at this point, wanna make sure I'm gonna close off these, uh, the evidence of the separation between the boot and the shirt. Oh, actually, before I do these, I wanna put a little bit more black up in between that beard. So I'm picking up a little bit more black, making sure I've closed off some of these little areas of unpainted um, canvas between my beard and my, um, and my shirt. 
so that works. And then I'm going to do the same thing down in through here. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush just so I can close this off a little bit, but still kind of control what I'm doing. So I still kind of want to see the edge of that boot so I don't so that I don't lose it here, but that's going to help me. There we go. Now I'm going to put white paint on my dirty brush. So I have a tiny bit of black, but more white on my brush right now. I'm going to create the um, the outline for the top of the boot. So I want these to kind of look like they're almost platform shoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to give like this little um, oval type of line in through here like this and like this. This now becomes the top of the boot and I'm going to get it to go really light so it's very evident that that is the the top part of the boot and I'm just letting my color kind of fade back into the darkness underneath that um, the shirt or the the costume so it's brighter on the tip of the boot and faded back I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black now just to make sure that it faded back into that area as much as I wanted to so just a little bit of black paint is closing off that gap in through there and now I'm going to pick back up black and white not a lot just a little bit on my brush to create the curve of the front of the boot so something like this I'm just going back and forth I put my brush kind of in the center and then just go back and forth with a little bit of a curve so this is going to create the illusion that this is a flat you know this is a platform type of shoe something like this putting it right in the middle and again if you went too light or too dark just adjust it accordingly I'm now picking up a tiny bit of black to make sure that I close off these edges in through here and in through here because I have provided enough of the um, appearance that I need to for the edges of the shoes so I can close off those gaps and then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna be finishing the green parts on our Frankenstein costume. <laughs> I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are my bright yellow green that I created, white and black. And what I'm going to do, you could certainly use a little brown too if you wanted to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be separating out the top portion of the head from the mustache from the beard. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using my green, my bright green color, and I'm going to be creating kind of shadows below this top section around the nose. And then I'll be creating a little shadows underneath my mustache. And then we'll be building some form with the highlights. I'm going to start with a little bit of my bright green plus a touch of black on my brush. So very little bit of both colors on your brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just kind of giving myself my, my dark outline of sorts that's going to help me through this um, process. So I'm going to come about halfway down the nose on the right hand side and give myself this little curve like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side. So I'm going to come about halfway down the nose and then I'm going to kind of give myself this little curve like that. So this is going to give you the information. That's the top and this is going to be the bottom. I'm going to still pick up a little bit of my bright green plus a teeny tiny touch of black paint. I'm going to give myself kind of a little outline around that nose to give myself some nice shadow underneath that nose where it's kind of meeting all the hair. Right in the center of the nose, I'm going to split this like this, left to right. That's going to be the start of my mustache. And then I'm going to pull these little tiny um, mustache hair things <laughs> out from under this part. So this is going to be a little shadowy. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit more paint with the green and the black just to the bright green and the black just to make sure that this doesn't look like just a line coming out from under here. So just pulling these out in a direction that I feel looks pretty natural, which is going to come out from here and then maybe out from the sides of the nose like this. This is all going to turn into mustache in a minute, but just want to make sure that I've got a little bit of um, 
transition where it's not just black paint underneath there. So that's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to bring a couple of these darker color, these darker brush strokes maybe down in through here to give myself a little bit of um, shape for that beard part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up more of my green on my dirty brush just to kind of release the, the last little bits of whatever black I might have in my brush. So this gives me a little transition from my from the dark to the light. As I build these um, things that I like to have dimension in them, I like to release um, the colors off of my brush in a transitional way towards the light. So this gives me my, my start for here. I think I'm gonna pull out a couple more little pieces in through here, just crossing over in through there with a little bit of that green and black. Now I'm gonna pick up my green on my dirty brush. I wanna put a whole second coat of green paint up in through here just to make sure that I have a nice coverage. We're gonna be putting black uh, hair on it in a, in a future step, but right now I just really wanna make sure that I have a pretty good coverage. It doesn't need to be perfect, but good enough to, um, to give a solid coat in through here. And again, any brush stroke will work, you can just paint it on there. As I come down to here, I will be adding a little bit of a highlight in a minute, but right now just want to put a second coat on here so it is fully rendered. And in a minute I'll put a little bit of a highlight because we're going to put a highlight where the bolts are going to be coming out from our um, Frankenstein head as well as um, on top of that nose, but I just wanted to get that second coat on there. I'm going to do the same thing on my beard. So I just picked up some of my green and I'm just going to start pu putting my second coat on my beard. I'm overlapping it into the black again because I know that it's going to be see-through and you're going to be able to, um, this is just going to build a beautiful texture to it. So I'm allowing it to overlap and be transparent um, in a minute. When I start to use white in the equation, it's going to be more um, more of a solid color. I'm going to put a little second coat over in through here as well And now I'm going to start building my highlights. So I've got good second coat I've got an area that's going to be my shadowy area now What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up. I already have my uh, Bright green. I'm also going to pick up white. So I have bright green bright green <laughs> Bright green plus white on my brush and I'm going to add highlights on this head So in through here, I'm adding a highlight I'm also going to add a little highlight coming here, all the way around this edge, and a couple over in through here and here. These are going to be where the bolts live <laughs> in a minute, in a future step. I don't want this to look too liney, so I'm going to wipe a little bit of that white off of my brush and use my, um, my light bright green to get this to fade in a little bit. So I don't want it to be too white, so just kind of allowing for a little bit of a blend in through there. And you could really get it to blend as much or as little as you want. That's gonna be a visual preference on your part. I'm gonna just kind of scoot this just a little bit more so it's a little softer looking. And I'm just really, as the paint is drying, just kind of softening it into the, um, the darker green color. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the beard. So bright green plus white on my brush at the same time, I'm gonna put some beautiful brightness in it in through here, allowing for that um, vibrancy of the green to really take over. Again, bright green plus white, gonna give some nice highlights on these pieces that are of the mustache that are kind of coming over the arms. And that will, uh, again, speak to the form of our, um, of our cute, gnome and every time i'm doing hair i like to put my brush in the i'm i'm stroking it in the way that i feel that that hair is laying or coming out of wherever it's coming out of so if i feel it's coming out of here i'm that's where my brush stroke goes to i don't try and confuse the brush stroke too much i just kind of uh, i'm doing what where I feel it is coming from. Like in through here, this is a little confusing area. So I'm just gonna pick up some more of my green, making sure that I've got as much coverage as I want. If I wanted to, I feel like I wanna pick up a little bit of black in through here. So just, just so I can 
give myself just a little delineation between the mustache and the beard a little bit more. So something like that will help me. And then I just kind of keep building it. So as I go through this process, if I feel I want an area a little darker, like I just did over here with the remnants of the black and the green on my brush, that will help to make these pieces pop out or recede. I'm picking up a little bit more of my green and white right now just because I feel I want a little bit more volume in this beard. And I would just kind of keep building it with these colors until I felt I had enough volume, enough curl, enough of whatever I desire to have in these pieces and that the and that everything is covered as much as I want it to be. And then once you've got your cute little beard done, we are going to be using um, our small brush for the next step. So you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and of course, now I love doing hair, so <laughs> this is always a hard step for me to stop. But once you get yours done, you can uh, put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the skin. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm going to use are brown, white, and my skin tone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a little bit of a shadow underneath all of my pieces of skin, and then I'm going to be putting a highlight to make them look nice and round. And I will connect the colors with my mid-tone, which is going to be my skin tone. So I'm going to start with a little bit of brown paint on my brush, and I'm going to take at the bottom of each one of my pieces of skin, I'm going to put a little bit of brown paint, and then I'm going to blend it up a little bit into the skin tone. So you might be able to get this on one shot, just kind of put it on there and then rub it into the skin tone. If that doesn't work out for you, you can always pick up your skin tone and kind of reverse that, um, like overlap it into that brown shadow that you put at the bottom. So there's a couple of different you know ways that you can do it, uh, but that way works pretty good for me. I put it down at the bottom, I rub it in, and then I'll pick up my skin tone and kind of overlap that skin tone on top of the shadow to give it um, a nice blend. So I'm gonna tackle the other pieces of skin. So I've got my shadow down at the bottom with a little bit of brown. I rub it in or up that object a little bit. Then I pick up my skin tone and I blend it back, kind of back it over the um, the, the shadowed area. I'm going to do these two as well. Wipe my brush off, pick up some brown paint. Going to hit the bottom of this piece or of this nose in through here. Blend it up a little bit. And I like to, when I'm rubbing, I use kind of the side of my, of my brush kind of in through here as opposed to the tip. It gives me some more stability and I can just kind of rub it. I'm going to do this, uh, this little hand with a touch of my brown. Just kind of get that that shadow on down there. And then I wiped my brush off on my paper towel to get the excess off. And then I'll pick up my, um, my skin tone just to make sure that I've got a good blend. So I just picked up my skin tone and again, kind of overlapping it into that shadow area. Do the same on the hand. And then I'm gonna do a similar process when it comes to the highlight. So I will put my highlight on where I want it. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush now. I'm going to tackle these, these guys with their highlight, wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put white paint on my brush and I'll do these two little hands first. I'm going to put my bright spot where I want it, so somewhere in through here. And then what I'll do is I'll rub that out so it kind of dissipates to the surrounding skin a little bit. Same thing here, just let it kind of uh, blend in with that surrounding skin. Now I'm going to pick up my skin tone and if you're going about this and you're saying mm, I think I want the, my skin tone to be a little bit lighter, like I feel I want these a little bit lighter, you can always just keep building that white, like I just picked up a little bit more white in order to get this to go a little bit lighter and you can blend it out further on top of the um, of the other skin tone. Like my other skin tone was still a little wet from when I did 
um, the first layer and you just kind of keep building it until you get it as bright and as round as you want. Having that round or having the bright spot kind of towards the top will allow it to um, tell the light sources up above and then just fading that that bright spot out toward out into the rest of the skin will allow it to look like it um, like it has some form. So I just put more white paint on my brush. This is a kind of a good size nose. So we're going to put quite a bit in through here. I'm just rubbing it out to um, get it to blend or have soft edges to it. And now without washing my brush, I'm just going to pick up my skin tone. So this is going to get that light area to just blend out or we can overlap them a bit and that'll give again, allow you to have some good form on it. And this technique may take you a couple times to get comfortable and used to it. You might opt for a different type of brush. You might opt to do more layers than I do. Whatever works for you is fine by me. I just reloaded my brush with a little bit of white. I'm gonna repeat that process on this little cute gnome appendage or hand <laughs> and just rub it out pick up my skin tone and you can see I just kind of keep repeating the process and as I go through this again I adjust it like I feel like I want this a little lighter so I just put a bit more white on my brush and just keep um, adjusting it as I go I'm gonna go ahead and hit this big guy's nose so I just put a bunch of white paint on my brush and it doesn't always have to be dead center I've got mine a little bit off to the right on these noses you could certainly make yours you know right in the center but I, I like to put the highlight up towards the top it doesn't have to be right at the top but up towards the top that's going to give my give it a, a you know some nice volume and let you know that the light source is probably above them and then you just kind of keep fiddling with it. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my skin tone to get this to blend out just a bit and blend in with the um, with the highlighted area. And you can always use a bit of liquid medium or water on your brush in order to get them the paint to stay open a little bit longer. And then I just have this little hand in through here, just a touch of my white paint, get it to blend out a little bit. And then I will pick up my skin tone on my dirty brush to get these to blend and then just fiddle with it let it dry if you want to again amp it up make it brighter or softer or darker feel free to do so and then we're going to be using this same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our trick-or-treat bucket I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, white, red, my bright green, and yellow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create some shape on my bucket. Then we're going to add some candy on the inside and we'll also be putting a little trick or treat message on the outside of our bucket. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna load my brush with a little bit of black and white, about equal parts of both. I'm gonna start adding some highlights to my bucket. I have the black and white. I'm just gonna take it and give myself a little bit of a highlight up at the top and through here. Still black and white on my brush. I'm gonna give myself an edge to my bucket. Well, I need a little more white than that so we can actually see it. So a little black and white is gonna give me the rim or edge to my bucket so I have a little bit on the back and then I'm going to bring this right around the front edge in through here so we've got an opening for our bucket so just black and white is creating this fun kind of lip to and you can just kind of imagine where it would go behind these little hands so if you just imagine the opening kind of traveling around like that so it makes sense and I'm just doing uh, a, a grayish edge for because I think it looks good. <laughs> I'm going to put black and white back on my brush. I'm going to put a highlight in the middle of my bucket in through here and blend it out. So it looks like we've got some roundness to the bucket. And I'm just kind of dry brush rubbing it out so it um, fades into the black over on the sides. I'm now going to pick up black paint and clean up all of my edges. So I've got black paint on my brush right now. So I want to kind of close off any edges that might be 
uh, visible, like down at the bottom, I feel like this isn't um, closed off enough, so I'm just putting some nice black paint down at the edges, cleaning up this side over in through here, and you could certainly, you know, clean yours up however you want to. I just know that mine didn't look finished at the bottom's edge, and you can also bring this black right underneath the lip of your um, bucket so it looks nice and finished in through there. And any um, area where it meets your hands too, you, if you've got to finish off any of those areas. Actually, I think I'm going to put a little shadow underneath my hand like it's making a shadow. Oh yeah, that looks cute. Do the same thing over here. Like my, my hand is putting a little shadow on my bucket. There we go. So now I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to put white shapes for candy on the inside. This white is going to help me to build bright colors of my candy. You can make any kind of candy that you want. I'm just going to do a couple of generic kind of shapes. I'm going to have like a lollipop sticking out here. So just, and I don't need to do very thick paint. I really just want to give, I guess this one's going to go in front of this little hand in through here. I just want to give the um, the shape of some fun candy. I'm in essence giving a primer coat with this white paint so when I go to put the color on it, the color will, will be as bright as I want it to. If I was to put, let's say, red paint on a black background, you wouldn't be able to see it hardly at all. So I need to give a, a white base to it. And I'm just gonna, so that's a lollipop, and then I'm just gonna make a bunch of um, carefree shape. So I'm going to do rectangles for maybe some candy bars, maybe just some little fun, you know, sticks for, I don't know, those um, like candy sticks <laughs> that have lots of sugar in them. You can have maybe some, I don't know what other kind of candy, candy cane, I, we got chocolate for, for, um, for trick-or-treat candies, we have candy corn, but I don't think you'd see the candy corn in the bucket. I'm just thinking of the tall stuff that would be sticking out, perhaps. So maybe I've got a couple of little pieces that, you know, are just, you know, we just see the tops of them, maybe little curved pieces or whatever. So that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this white paint and write my message on my bucket. So I'm just going to write trick-or-treat. You could certainly write whatever you want. I'm just going to kind of do it on um, at an angle. I think I need a little moisture on my brush here so I can get some clean lines. So I put a tiny bit of water with my white paint on my brush. And I just like to use my own kind of simple um, penmanship when I'm doing these painting letters. You could certainly draw yours out with a pencil if you wanted to, or have any kind of other fun way to make your letters, but I tend to just like to be carefree and kind of let happen what's going to happen, thinking that, you know, maybe a, a child perhaps wrote the, oh, trick or treat. Don't misspell things either. <laughs> I tend to do that every now and again. So sometimes when I'm talking, I probably shouldn't be talking. I should be concentrating on my spelling, but maybe somebody just freehand wrote this on their bucket anyway. So I wouldn't be terribly concerned about your letters being super perfect. Um, and then once you've got your letters on there, I'm just going to color in the whatever colors I want for my candy. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a little red paint on my brush. I'm going to put a spiral in my, in my lollipop. So just red paint. And of course, you might want to make sure that your white paint underneath is dry before you start this. I can see that mine is pretty dry, so I'm, I'm safe to, to go ahead and do this. Maybe we've got a red stick for the lollipop, so I'm just painting red on top of this. And then, and then I'm just gonna kind of freestyle all the other colors. I think maybe I'll have a little red, uh, maybe, maybe I'll put this one red in through here. Maybe I'm gonna pick up red and yellow on my brush at the same time. So maybe I'll have a little orange on this guy in through here. So that was red and yellow. Now I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna wash my brush and pick up just yellow. So I'll have maybe a yellow treat right in through here. Maybe I'll have another yellow one here. I'm just, 
having fun with these. Now I'm going to pick up my bright green. So maybe I'll have a bright green one in through here and here. And of course you could put polka dots, you could put stripes. I'm going to pick up some white and put some stripes on this piece of candy. So have fun with whatever you want to do at this point. We are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your trick-or-treat bucket done, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the head on the Frankenstein, cost Frankenstein costume. <laughs> I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm going to use are black and white. You could, of course, tweak this into whatever that you would like, but I'm going to have some fun here. What I'm going to first do is I'm using some black paint and I'm going to create some bolts coming out of the head. So I'm going to start um, in this little curved area in through here and I'm just going to give myself a horizontal line that goes a little bit past the head, something like this. And then I'm going to give myself a vertical type of shape, like a rectangle type of a shape. Again, you could make yours as elaborate as you want. I'm just going to go for something nice and simple, nice and basic. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure the original Frankenstein had a much more um, fancy bolt coming out of his head, but for my cartoon gnome, he's going to get a nice simple bolt coming out of his head. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And you don't even have to be concerned if they're exactly the same from one side to the other. So maybe one of them is longer or shorter or bigger, you know, have fun. I'm going to be putting a scar on his head. So you could put multiple scars. Just it's Frankenstein. So he can be put together with all kinds of mechanical type of um, devices and screws and bolts and all kinds of good stuff. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to put my hair on. My hair, I'm going to just kind of outline the top of the, the head in through here. I think I might make this left side a little bit. You can always reshape the head. So right now I feel like this is kind of too rounded. I think I need to make it a little more boxy. So I'm just going to pull this corner out just a little bit more like that. Yeah, that looks good. And then once I've got kind of that top outlined, I'm going to start pulling the paint down in these streaks. I'm going to have it kind of longer on the left and the right, almost to the bolts, something like that. And then up top, I'm going to have it shorter. So I don't want it to look like a, a line going across like that. So I definitely want to make sure that I'm pulling down uh, a little bit everywhere so it doesn't look like I've just drawn a line up at the top. So even if you have to pull down a little bit more than you had anticipated, go for it. Don't worry about pulling down too much. Just you don't want that to look like a, the line was um, painted. You want it to look like it's hair coming down. And then once I've got that, you can even put a tiny bit of water or liquid medium on your brush to give yourself a little bit more flowy of pieces if you wanted to. That will help to give you uh, the ability to have more singular type of strands and I'm just having fun with kind of pulling it down in these little um, kind of curved lines. Some are shorter than others, a little bit longer on the on the left and the right side just to look like it's, you know, part of a cute cost. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is making sure I've got the ones that I want over here. Now I'm going to just add a little bit of a highlight. Oh, actually, before I do the highlight, I'm going to put a little stitch on his head. You could certainly use your small brush for this one, but I'm going to I'm going to use this medium brush and I'm just going to put a stitch somewhere. We're going to just put it in through here like that and then some horizontal or stitch type of marks in through. You can put several on the head, however many that you want is up to you. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I know that it's overloaded with black paint right now. So washing and drying my brush and I'm going to put a little bit of black and white just on the tip of my brush, just a teeny tiny bit. And I'm just going to streak in a couple of little highlights here. So a little bit at the top there. And then I'm going to go from the top right here and then just pull it down like that. I'm going to do the same thing over on the left hand side. And again, if this brush is too big for you to work in this small area, certainly just switch to your small brush. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put this up at the top and then just pull it down like that. And then you can make any little, oh, I wanna do a little highlight on the head too. So I'm putting a tiny bit of white paint on my brush, a little bit on the tip of my brush. I want a little highlight up at the top here. So a little bit of white paint up in through here like that. And now I'm gonna put white and black and just pull this down a little bit. So this, again, just helps to add a little bit of form onto the head. So I just added just a little bit of a highlight up in this top left-hand corner, or top right-hand corner of the head. And then we're gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, make any little adjusting that you want, and then you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some trees and some grass. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black and my bright green. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, some trees on the sides with some spooky branches kind of coming around us again to give myself a nice border. And then we're just gonna put a couple of wild and carefree pieces of grass down in the middle. I'm gonna start with some black paint I'm going to have a tree coming up this right hand side of my canvas. I am going to just kind of let it let the roots kind of go into the ground, something like that. I don't need to do anything fancy here. I am just um, making some carefree uh, illusion of a <laughs> of a tree. I want it to look maybe a little spooky. So as I'm going through and adding some branches, I do like whenever I think of spooky trees, I think, oh, maybe we can add these little kind of wiggly type of branches that almost look like they're broken. So what I'll do is every now and again, I'll just bring out these little wiggle marks, <laughs> skinny wiggle marks, but I want this tree to kind of look like it's over here and it's going to just wrap itself up um, around the edge of the of the canvas. So I'm just going to have these branches kind of sticking out and, you know, kind of coming out every now and again. And of course you could, as you, you do in these skinnier branches, if it's more comfortable again for you to use a smaller brush, feel free to do so. I sometimes just like to use minimal amount of tools when I'm doing my paintings, but again, whatever, wherever your comfort zone is, that's where you should be when you're painting. You don't have to follow every, minute little thing that I'm doing, if you feel more comfortable using a different kind of brush, feel free to do so. And then again, just kind of bringing out some little wiggly branches. That's looking pretty good for me on that side. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple over here. Maybe we don't see the whole trunk over here. Maybe I just see this top branch coming out it over in through here and try and make one side look a little bit different than the other. That's gonna really help to balance the painting and not make it look too uniform. If you've got, you know, the same type of object from one side to the other, that's great. But if you can diversify, like I've got a big branch here, whereas on this side I have the trunk, it still keeps it nice and balanced, but you have that diversity um, where it's not looking too uniform from one side to the other. And then again, I'm just kind of wiggling in some of my spooky branches. You can have yours, you know, Maybe you like yours to be even longer and spookier. <laughs> Maybe we've got one kind of coming in this direction. Feel free, you know, again, use my branches or whatever kind of branches work for, for your spooky. Ooh, maybe we have one coming out like this too. Yeah, I like that one. Okay, so now I'm going to do some grass. I'm going to start with just black paint. I'm going to have wild grass kind of coming all through this ground. But again, I don't want to over paint. I don't want the um, to lose my my illusion of my of my little gnomes kind of walking through the forest. So I'm going to put some longer ones maybe down at the bottom. And then as I get towards where my gnomes are, maybe I just put a couple of smaller ones by their feet. And I just like to give some nice diversity. I'm taking my brush. I've got a little bit of um, I thinned out my paint a little bit with a touch of water on my brush, which allows me to just be pretty darn carefree as I'm adding these. I tend to flick my brush up in a curved manner. As I'm closer to the bottom, I'm pushing a little bit harder so I get a little bit wider 
of a mark or a bigger up mark, but as I am up towards um, the back side of them, maybe I'm, I'm not pushing as hard, just getting more slender type of pieces. And then again, down towards the bottom, I push just a little bit harder, giving me these wider, um, the wider type of um, pieces of grass. And then once I've got the black on, I'm gonna put in a little bit of um, the green as well. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I feel like I want a little bit more coming up this side in through here and maybe just a couple pieces out by this tree as well. So now that I've got that on there, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up my bright green on my dirty brush. So this is going to allow me to just one, have harmony with the green in my um, in the top of my painting and to allow me to give some good texture in this grass. If you wanted to use just the um, green oxide, you could certainly do that. You could use that along with some of the bright green and that'll give you some, again, diversity in your colors, but providing, um, you know, still a, a nice shade of green grass. You can even put some in front of your of your boots. That's going to, or in front of the clothing. That's going to give um, the illusion that the that the um, little gnomes are just walking through this, you know, dark area out in nature. <laughs> and then once you've got as much green as you want, if you overdid the green, feel free. I just picked up some black with my green. You can pick them both up at the same time. So alternate between your green and your black to get some fun grassy appearance. And then we have one more step left to go after this and it's gonna be with the small brush. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna sign this in the bottom left with black paint right in my grass. <laughs> you might not even be able to see it, nice and subtle. I like to sign mine with my initials. Yeah, you can't see that. I'm gonna to switch to my bright green. <laughs> I, I like to sign with my initials, but you could certainly sign with your first name or the date or a symbol. Whatever works for you is totally fine because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really fun Halloween inspired image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.